So, azeotropic distillation, what is the difference in extractive distillation and azeotropic distillation? A basic difference, of course, there are many definitions, okay. We see one book, we will have one definition and all that. Uh, but the simplest definition that uh, we use here is when you have mixture A B, which is difficult to separate, okay. When I say it is difficult to separate, means either there is a formation of azeotrope between A and B or they are very close boiling, like acetic acid water, okay, very close boiling. In that case, I add the third component C, this external compound, okay. In extractive distillation, I do the same thing, right. But there, this C does not form azeotrope with A or B. You remember the RCM? There is no azeotrope between C and A, there is no azeotrope between C and B. In this case, the difference is this C is an azeotropic agent, okay, which forms azeotrope with either A or B or both and makes the separation easier, okay, right. So, that is the, that's the difference. In both the cases, I am adding external component. In azeotropic distillation, this external component forms an azeotrope with either A or B or both A and B. For example, ethanol water, if I add benzene, you have seen that, you add benzene, benzene forms azeotrope with ethanol, benzene forms azeotrope with water, benzene forms azeotrope with both of them. That means, there is a ternary azeotrope as well and we are going to see that case now, right. Toluene, same thing, cyclohexane, same thing, right. If we add ethylene glycol, it does not form azeotrope. So, the same mixture, ethanol water, I can separate it by extractive distillation, I can separate it by azeotropic distillation. When I use ethylene glycol as external component, which does not form azeotrope, I call it as extractive distillation. And if I add benzene, cyclohexane or toluene as external component, and just because these compounds form azeotrope, with ethanol, benzene and both rather, the three azeotropes form, right. We call it as azeotropic distillation, okay. Now, and this is very important. In most of the cases, the azeotrope is heterogeneous, okay. Now, we are going to talk about heterogeneous azeotrope, okay. Now, what is heterogeneous azeotrope? Phase splitting, okay. You have phase splitting taking place y is equal to x anyway, the vapors when they condense at that composition, they will form liquid. In homogeneous azeotrope, you have single liquid phase. In heterogeneous azeotrope, you have two liquid phases, right. Now, when I say y is equal to x, that means vapor composition is equal to liquid composition. In the case when you have two liquid phases, this liquid composition is the overall liquid composition and not the composition of any of the phase, any individual phase, okay. Always remember that overall liquid composition. Okay, so y is equal to x. So that is your heterogeneous azeotrope. And in azeotropic distillation, right, when I add external component, it forms azeotrope, and that azeotrope has to be heterogeneous. And why? Of course, answer is given here. See, a forming azeotrope, the azeotrope has to be broken later, right? If benzene is forming azeotrope with ethanol or water, what will happen? I can separate that azeotrope and make the separation of ethanol and water easier, right? See, A and B, ethanol and water, they are forming azeotrope. I want to break this azeotrope by adding another component which forms azeotrope, okay? Right? Okay? So, fine, I will break this azeotrope and I will separate azeotrope formed by this component. Now, this separated azeotrope again has to be broken, right. Otherwise, how will I recycle the external component or normally it is called as entrainer in azeotropic distillation. I need to recycle that. So, that azeotrope I cannot break it otherwise. So, I am solving one problem, but getting into another problem, right, okay, if it is homogeneous azeotrope. But if it is heterogeneous azeotrope, okay, separation is not a problem because you have phase splitting taking place. I can separate one layer from another layer. Now, X is your overall composition, but when I separate these layers, the compositions are different, 
okay and i can exploit this behavior of heterogeneous isotrop okay to get rid of this problem or get rid of this limitation right so most of the times in fact in every case that is practiced in industry of azeotropic distillation you have the you have the azeotrope heterogeneous and not homogeneous okay because practically it's always easy to break this azeotrope by just phase splitting okay right heterogeneous azeotrope if you separate the layers two layers okay you have broken the azeotrope right so it's a selective compound in such a way that it forms heterogeneous that's right that's right yeah now can we use azeotropic distillation for binary systems uh what's the purpose now for example butanol water okay or butyl acetate water um uh, it's a binary system forms azeotrope heterogeneous azeotrope okay now if you see y versus x diagram binary system so i kept till again y versus x what is this diagram heterogeneous azeotrope heterogeneous azeotrope what's the difference between this and homogeneous see homogeneous is this see the difference is a straight line there what does it mean suppose you are in this range okay phase splitting takes place okay and i get two layers with these two compositions right i get two layers with these two composition the overall composition is here that is azeotropic composition okay right now i have a field xf here butanol water i'm plotting it for water which is more volatile right i have this field now i am in the homogeneous region there is no phase splitting phase splitting is here in this region right so i have homogeneous single phase mixture of butanol and water i want to separate butanol from water it may be less say 5% 2% okay but i want to separate it i want to get both these compounds in pure form okay so i can exploit this behavior i just give this to a distillation column right this mixture xf what will you get at the bottom i will look for a stable point right what do you get pure pure butanol right what, what will you get at the top water as your drop So you are somewhere here in this region, right? If you have sufficient number of stages, you can go up to this point. When the vapors they condense, you have two liquid phase, you have decanter there, and the two layers, okay, you have two layers with composition given by compositions given by these two points, right? Okay. So even if there is azeotrope, now even if there is azeotrope, I am able to. cross See, i have a separate layer now okay i have two layers if i just take the aqueous layer out if i take the aqueous layer out this is my aqueous layer what is the composition this point right so this a and this is a right so i have gone from this region to this region now so phase splitting helps you to cross the boundary which was otherwise not possible for homogeneous systems i hope it is clear see i was here by doing distillation by doing distillation i go up to this point right providing number of sufficient number of stages i go up to this point right and in this region since i am in this particular region phase splitting takes place and i have two streams with compositions given by this point and this point so i have phase splitting taking place right i have this composition a 
this is the one and this composition is I will call this as B, B right okay. So, I am able to cross the boundary which was otherwise not possible when you had homogeneous azeotrope. Homogeneous azeotrope or in this case you get stuck up here, there is no phase splitting right. So, this phase splitting it, it comes because of non-ideality okay, but I am exploiting this non-ideality okay to get a separation. Now, what happens later? Now, this A, okay, this stream, now I have crossed the region. I, I am interested in pure water now, I already got pure water now, right. So, I, I put it to another column. Now, you are here, this goes as a feed, right. This goes as a feed. You will get this point as top or bottom. Huh? bottom yeah because it is in below the diagonal. So, you will get this point is bottom. What is this? Water. What is the top composition? Somewhere here as your drop okay. So, I can just put it to the same decanter right. So, effectively what am I doing? I have feed going in I am separating butanol and water and this can go as a reflux very interesting system okay because I, I need reflux for both the columns. So, I can reflux the organic phase to the column. Oh A means A is this point actually okay that means it is a binary mixture I am just denoting this because I should we should be able to correlate I am not saying A is a pure component A is the name of that point okay the composition okay. So, it is a binary mixture. Similarly, B is also a binary mixture. Okay. So, this is a binary mixture. So, it has water in it, it has butanol in it. And this goes to the column and you remove water from the bottom and again some azeotrope okay, or close to azeotropic mixture comes out. I will just put it again to the same decanter. Okay. So, I have a complete system where I am giving feed and is removing butanol and water in pure form. So, I am using it is a very simple system actually, but I am using the heterogeneous azeotrope okay, right, to get this separation. If there was no heterogeneous azeotrope, separation was not possible at all right, because I get stuck up here homogeneous azeotrope. See the difference? You have butanol water system this formation of heterogeneous azeotrope. If the azeotrope was not heterogeneous, first column itself though I would be able to separate butanol at the top you would get this azeotrope right. So, that separation I, you get stuck up there, but just because there is a phase splitting taking place I exploit that phase splitting to go from one region to another region by just doing decanting there okay right and I can separate pure water because I have crossed the region now okay. So, this is a simple system azeotropic. Now, we are going to see a very popular and at the same time a complex system okay. Uh, again the same thing ethanol water using benzene as entrainer. The point that I wanted to make as far as this system was concerned that binary system was concerned uh, is that the phase splitting helps you to cross the region okay or you cross the boundary okay go from one region to another region. So, that is what I wanted to tell you from that example. A same principle is used in more complicated systems like terminal systems uh, ethanol water benzene system to cross the region and we will see that. Before we go ahead let us see what happens to the RCM when we have two liquid phases form okay. Now, this is your triangular diagram okay, this is your triangular diagram. Now, in this case phase splitting is taking place. Now, look at this red envelope you must have seen such diagrams in your liquid liquid extraction okay. 
the phase splitting what, what does it mean it means that you if you are in this particular region red part okay in this region this phase splitting taking place and you have this tie lines right tie lines giving the compositions of individual phases right this is where you have phase splitting taking place suppose you are in this region you have homogeneous system right your single liquid phase here okay and you have two liquid phases here this is immiscible region rather okay now example is again benzene here benzene ethanol and water okay now benzene and water benzene and water are immiscible this very small solubility okay very small solubility of benzene in water and water in benzene or other way around rather okay water in benzene and benzene in water right but in this region there is a phase splitting taking place now residue curve map what will happen to the residue curve map if you are in the homogeneous region it is one and the same like it is like what we had before but if, if you are here you can derive now we, we are not going to spend time in de derivation but you are going to see that instead of x now I have x overall okay x overall that means the overall liquid phase composition right earlier you had dx by d zeta or yeah, it should be d zeta here is equal to x minus y right now I have dx o by d zeta equal to x minus x 0 or x o minus y okay so it behaves in the same way I do not have to worry about two liquid presence of two liquid phases when I am in this particular region here it is overall composition I should treat it as overall composition whereas anyway in homogeneous it is going to be overall composition so you have continuity in residue curves okay if there is a phase split does not mean that there is split in residue curve but the moment I go in two phase region x becomes x overall okay you do not have to worry about the presence of two liquid phases though individual phases are present okay we do not need to consider that you can derive that okay now you have two liquid phases you boil it right component balance for both the phases okay and you will get this particular equation okay so I do not have to worry about whatever rules we have developed or rather come out with uh, based on the residue curve maps are going to be same here as well so boundary will get extended in the two phase region and all okay right so just read this note the comparison with homogeneous systems indicates that the curves behave in the same manner as that of homogeneous system because the equation is same okay only difference is instead of x you have x0 right only difference is that in the two liquid phase region one should plot overall composition instead of the composition of individual phases right so I am not looking at individual phase suppose I am here actual individual phase composition would be given by the tie line right but I am not plotting that as far as residue curve is concerned so again the problem I am defining here separation of ethanol water azeotrope now I have ethanol water azeotrope okay we have seen that uh, experiment as well okay typically fermentation growth would give you 10 percent solution of ethanol dilute solution I get I remove water from it and I get azeotrope from that now this azeotrope is difficult to break okay I am going to use azeotropic distillation to break this azeotrope I am going to use benzene or cyclohexane or toluene as entrainer okay so all of them form azeotrope okay which is heterogeneous binary azeotrope with water okay all of them means benzene cyclohexane and toluene okay and a ternary azeotrope this is very important okay which is again heterogeneous and these both are minimum boiling azeotropes now let us draw a residue curve map for this system okay this is the data given to you okay benzene boiling point water 100 ethanol 78 you have these binary azeotropes form okay benzene water 70 then ethanol benzene 67 ethanol water 78 and there is a ternary azeotrope okay right so how many nodes you have how many nodes you have 
in this case how many nodes? 7 right because you have 4 azure drops and 3 pure components. Now I have to, I have to know which of these are stable points, which of these are unstable points and which of these are saddles right. And water benzene binary is heterogeneous and even this ternary is also heterogeneous okay. So can you draw RCM? Benzene, alcohol and water there is one azeotrope here, there is one azeotrope here, there is one azeotrope here, there is one azeotrope here. here. How many total nodes? Total number of nodes is 4 plus 3, 7. Okay. Let us write down the boiling points. Can you tell me the boiling points? Benzene 80, yeah. Then alcohol 78. Yeah, I am just changing my convention now because normally I write the most volatile component here, but it does not matter, okay. Like uh, now, water 100, right. Now, these boy, uh, these azeotropes, alcohol, benzene. Alcohol benzene A B or B A 67. Yeah, water alcohol 78 point something, right? It should be less than this. Less than alcohol. Alcohol is what? 78 point? Pure alcohol? 78.3. And this is 78, huh? 78.06. Oh, I see. Very close. Hmm. Then Water benzene 70.50 and ternary 66, right? 66. Now, as I said, these two are heterogeneous, these two are heterogeneous, that means the liquid envelope will be right because these two points would come in the phase splitting zone, right. Zone in which you have two liquid phases, these two points, right? Can you draw RCM? Don't worry about phase splitting. As I said before, RCM just ignore the phase splitting thing, and you draw RCM. First step, draw arrows. Okay, binary edges. All are minimum boiling. So, arrows will go away from those points. Okay. Then I will join these 66, 67. So, arrow will be in this direction. 66, 78 arrow will be in this direction, 66, 70 arrow will be in this direction, okay. How many pairs? Unstable nodes? How many unstable nodes? One? There is only one unstable node, oh, that is that ternary as your trough, okay. How many stable? Three. So, how many pairs? Four? Three only, yeah. So, three pairs and three zones. So, I can see these three zones. This is one, this is two, and this is three. So, one, two, and three. Three zones or three regions, and these are the boundaries, okay. Now, I, I need to use this RCM to separate or break this azeotrope. This is my feed, ethanol water azeotrope, that is my feed, okay. Can I draw RCMs now? I will just follow this, okay. Just look at what I am doing.
is follow this arrow you go to this point then here 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 I am ignoring the presence of liquid liquid split this is my RCM ok. Now before I go for a sequence see I have this as a free I have this as my feed and I want to separate alcohol and water in pure form right alcohol and water in pure form. So in this system you have this as a feed right and I am interested in alcohol and water and alcohol and water both are stable nodes. So whatever sequence that I am going to come up with okay my both products are going to come as bottom products ok. So this is something that you should learn just by looking at RCM ok. You do not need to uh, do the complete exercise of synthesizing the sequence and then realize it ok. These are some tips ok. This is how to read RCM right. So you are going to get both ethanol and water ok in pure form as bottom products ok. Now this is your feed. Now I am going to design or rather synthesize a column sequence right that would give me pure ethanol and pure water ok. I am going to add benzene, the benzene is going to go into the system ok right and it will be recycled inside because there will be no external addition of uh, benzene if there are no losses right. So I have a feed going in ethanol water. I have a column, so you have a choice ok. Of course you have a pre-fractionator first where you have 10 percent ethanol I think I have in the notes I have shown you ok you have one column pre-fractionator ok. I am not showing that here I am directly starting with this as a feed ok that is your azeotropic mixture ok right. So with this as a feed now I want to take bottom product in the first column. Right, you have a choice you can either go for ethanol or water ok right. In this case so works out that it, it is ethanol ok you, you, you remove ethanol from the bottom right. Ethanol is a stable point ok water is a stable point in the first column I remove ethanol from the bottom right. So the top composition will be what? this is coming as the bottom product. Now in you are in this region ok your top composition the vapor composition is not going to be here not going to be here it will be in that region only right because I am not able to cross the boundary right I am not able to cross the boundary. So the top composition here is going to be in this region ok in the upper region right. Now you should design a column your number of stages should be such that my top composition should be where here or here huh? below here here why see if you are here then you are not exploiting phase split. I want to cross the boundary later. See your water is sitting in one region, ethanol is sitting in another region right. I want to cross the boundary ok. So I should exploit the liquid liquid split. So the column number of stages should be such that I am in this region the top composition should be in this region right. So this is your top composition this is your vapor composition here right. Then what do you have you have a decanter right you have a decanter. So you suppose this is your vapor composition your decanter would be giving you the phase plate 
and a two layers with these two compositions right okay one layer would be benzene rich this is benzene one layer would be water rich right so this is your water rich phase and this is your benzene rich phase so benzene rich phase i would i should recycle it back because benzene is added as an entrainer okay so i'll put it back to the column now you got this bottom layer this is your bottom layer okay benzene rich sorry uh, water rich i will take it to another column and here okay what is the stable node in this zone ah huh? water so i'll take water out from the bottom right it's not yet complete okay what what will you get at the top will you get azeotrope see don't that's why i told you don't forget that liver rule i have identified two compositions okay water this is my feed the top composition would be on the line joining these two okay i won't be able to cross this i i won't go here so my top composition would be somewhere here on this line let's say this okay right so this is my top composition this is the composition i have here right i should connect that stream somewhere no i just can't leave it like that it should be recycled okay i have see i have got what i wanted right i have i have got ethanol pure ethanol i have got pure water but i'll just leave it like this 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 column also needs reflux right at the same time if it just goes out then that is loss i will get one stream with this composition with all the three components present what will i do with that it should be recycled so i can give it back to either decanter or i can just give it to here because decanter is no meaning because it is not going to split because this is homogeneous right i'll just give it back to the column okay and then you can check the material balance lines okay there are many material balances that you can perform in this okay for example is this clear see how i use the phase split okay to go from one region to another region even if benzene forms azeotrope with this and you have so many regions possible just because of phase split i was able to separate water and ethanol in pure form right you can note the overall material balance now for this particular distillation column say column d2 and this is d1 for d2 this is my feed this is my top product of course you may have re reflux here for this this is my top product this is my feed and this is my bottom right are they on a the straight line water feed and a top product they are on a the straight line fine now look at of column 1 which is slightly more complicated okay right what is the resultant feed to the column now when i do the material balance i have to identify the boundary okay what is that boundary see this is that boundary which are the streams going in the two streams going in okay the two streams coming out is no other stream crossing that boundary the four streams crossing that boundary two going in two going out okay right now i want to see whether the material balance is satisfied or not liver rule resultant feed what's the resultant feed which will be the, which will be the combination of these two now which are these two ethanol water is this right and this particular stream this right so your resultant would be 
on the line, line joining these two points right that is your resultant feed to column 1 ok D1 that is the resultant feed going in to the boundary and these two are the products pure ethanol is sitting here this is my feed right this is my resultant feed pure ethanol sorry pure ethanol and this stream where is this composition where is it here right ok. So, this point this point and resultant feed should be on the same line ok resultant feed and top and bottom compositions should be on the same line are this on the same line ethanol this particular stream and the resultant feed ethanol this particular stream and the resultant feed azeotropic distillation. Now, instead of benzene if I take cyclohexane it will have a similar nature the RC will be simi quite similar ok. So, I can say ok I can use cyclohexane if I use some other solvent and give some different RCM then I have to do this exercise again. It is not that this is the only RCM that is used for azeotropic distillation there are many other possibilities ok. All right. So, this is what we have seen ok the three regions form and this is the configuration ok. Of course, I have shown you three columns here first column is a simple pre fractionator ok and from that I get a azeotrope this is this is something that I do as azeotropic distillation sorry yeah it, it will contain benzene. So, it is this this particular stream which is used as a recycle ok and P is this stream. So, both are given back to the column. So, benzene is going back to the column. So, in this there is no fresh benzene required if there is no loss of benzene right it is totally recycled through these two streams P and Q right. So, in a continuous system at steady state I do not need extra benzene if there is no loss of benzene through this if there is a loss of benzene through ethanol and water then I need some makeup benzene ok. Now, as far as phase split is concerned do you have a phase split in the column in this case look at the profiles I am choosing this point in such a way that this part of the phase split or two, two phase region is very small. So, you at the most you will have phase split in the upper portion of the column first two stages right and which is very important normally operational point of view ok column is always good to have single liquid phase in the column if there are two liquid phases there is so many problems handling or operating the column ok. So, that is why I choose this point in such a way that it is very close to the boundary when I am saying boundary it is a liquid liquid boundary not our RCM boundary it is very close to it. So, that at the most we will have phase splitting in top one or two stages if you can avoid that also it is better. So, the column is operated in homogeneous mode that means in single liquid phase right whereas phase splitting takes place outside the column a very wise or rather um, judicious way of uh, operating the column ok. I am using phase split I am exploiting the phase split, but not allowing that to happen inside a column right that is a that is a suggestion ok. See Z should be chosen such that there is no phase splitting inside the column why because it is difficult to operate and control a column with phase splitting taking place on stages ok right you have some practical issues as well. Now, this is another system that I have shown here uh, which is a very specific example uh, I would like you to rather just uh, have a look at it and uh, 
try it out yourself okay, instead of we spending time on this it's just additional system okay uh, i'll just explain what exactly uh, is we are doing here uh, the purpose is to separate acetic acid water mixture okay by azeotropic distillation it's a very famous example popular example commercial example people do that in industry uh, is there any azeotrope between these two there is no azeotrope like ethanol water or unlike ethanol water okay there is no azeotrope between acetic acid and water then why do you need uh, azeotropic distillation you need azeotropic distillation because it's a close boiling mixture okay it's a close boiling mixture right if you if you do normal distillation for acetic acid water distillation will take place i can get pure acetic acid i can get pure water but you will need large number of stages you will need large reflux ratio it's an expensive affair right whereas if you use some entrainer use some entrainer like say butyl acetate okay then it will form azeotrope with water which is heterogeneous azeotrope and makes the separation easier makes the separation easier so i'll need, need less number of stages energy cost will go up because reflux ratio comes down right okay and that's the purpose so if you see on the rcm your feed is here but it is not azeotrope it is not azeotrope it's a dilute acetic acid mixture okay this is not azeotrope so if you just look at this binary i can separate acetic acid and water in pure form it's not a problem okay but i don't want to do that because because it's expensive so i had butyl acetate butyl acid forms a phase split region with water and there is azeotrope with water as well so this is one azeotrope sitting here okay there are no other azeotropes in this system okay right can we use this rcm to generate or synthesize a column sequence so i have shown it here clearly okay you just go through that hmm? and if you have any questions you can ask me today or tomorrow hmm? so i have i've shown it all the points okay here the q corresponds to this t corresponds to this hmm? and i have used all the rules that we have looked at so far rcm okay we should not cross the boundary right so once we are very clear about this uh, methodology or feasibility issues then there is no problem once you have really it's easy to rather design sequence or synthesize a sequence for azeotropic distillation or extractive distillation okay of course whatever we have learned is uh, just uh, the beginning okay like uh, you'll have to really uh, spend more time uh, read it on your own and do some exercises given in the book and probably whatever i'm telling you here okay to get mastery over this particular technique okay uh, then only rather you would be able to extend it to uh, the systems of your interest okay uh, what's the purpose doing all this one can say always that okay i'll just do experiment in laboratory i'll do some simulations and uh, find out okay i why should i learn this residue curve maps and all of course for teachers it's good okay academic purpose like students will also enjoy drawing uh, residue curve maps and all that but then in industry is it really useful okay uh, see if you're dealing with ideal systems okay is not at all useful okay if you're dealing with ideals like example fcc um, uh, product or even refinery refinery nowhere this is useful okay take it from me okay no need to learn rcm at all right whenever you are dealing with ideal system or non azeotropic systems rcm is not required this is for azeotropic systems okay so most of the time in fine chemical industry okay right or even for that matter chemical industry where you are talking about azeotrope formation close boiling mixtures okay you are you are doing some chemical reactions okay uh, you you are uh, you have polar non polar components mixture and all that you are talking about a separation you will come across such systems okay and there you will need uh, uh, at least you need to know uh, the thermodynamic behavior of the system and there is no other way okay uh, to um, visualize this behavior okay other than the residue curve map technique for multi component systems 
so whatever we have learned okay for binary system macap thin okay it improves our knowledge okay it gives us insight into distillation but that is restricted to binary system okay and if you want to extend it to multi component system this is the way okay now what we have done here is just looked at ternary systems okay now we may have quaternary systems we may have five component systems right um, it's difficult to visualize okay for such systems okay you have mixtures with many components and all that but what people have done okay uh, those who are involved in this research okay they have as i told in the first very first lecture on conceptual design they have come up with certain rules some mathematical tools okay which are based on ternary systems visualization okay and they have extended it to even the multi component system and they have made programs and their software is available okay to come up with the sequences like what we have done okay so these softwares they make use of residue curve maps okay and then uh, even for multi component systems you have a residue curve map okay even if you, i can't visualize it yeah i have it in mathematical form okay a residue curve okay how many stable points you may have 15 stable points you may have uh, 10 uh, saddles possible depending on how many components you have okay so there is a mathematical representation of residue curve map this is a graphical representation right so there are softwares okay which uh, which are based on such technique okay and uh, aspen split okay aspen has a software called or a module called uh, aspen split which makes use of this particular technique okay uh, for ternary and quaternary systems it would be very easy to uh, visualize okay like and you can you come across such systems okay many times in industry and you can just look at a residue curve and see whether the separation is possible or not and you can take a decision there itself okay uh, so you can draw a residue curve map in aspen okay, you don't have to solve those equations yourself there is a software called distill of course aspen itself has something called as but that distill is different okay i am talking about uh, another software a separate software called distill okay which makes use of uh, the conceptual design concepts okay and uh, of course this is not the end of it because this gives input to your simulation right so whatever results i am getting from this okay i have i have synthesized the column sequence i have got number of stages for every column i have got reflux ratio for every column right but then that is approximate based on what the constant molar overflow assumption right and that is going to go as input to your simulator that is where you will do some fine tuning and after that you will do optimization ok. So, the complete exercise of designing an overall design I am not talking about conceptual design complete overall design would include all these steps. So, this is just one step ok that goes as of course the outcome of this goes as input to the simulator ok. Otherwise there are ways to deal with the simulator people go by trial and error just uh, give some number of stages, give some feed flow rate, feed in uh, composition, give reflux ratio and see whether what you are getting at top and bottom is matching with your requirement or what is desired ok. Sometimes it may match ok and you are lucky in that case. But of course in that case since do not you do not have understanding simulator is like a black box it may be may not be an optimal design ok you can still improve that design ok. Uh, for that this understanding is necessary ok. Uh, so, if you are working in refinery, if you are working in ideal systems forget this, but then if you are working with non ideal systems ok this is very important ok especially the azeotropic systems and of course when you have tangent pinches and all we have not covered that part ok that is also very important sometimes you may have tangent pinches ok multi component system also you may realize ok how to deal with them and all again one more exercise and if you uh, go through the book they have talked about it.